let's face it, not all babies are cute. I was so ugly, my mother breastfed me through a straw. Especially in the world of movies. Some are just downright creepy. Whether they were infused with the DNA of Satan himself or have some alien-like features, a scary baby is enough to haunt your dreams and nightmares for years to come. So now is the time to take a look back and not at the babies who make us laugh, give us all the good feels, or make us ready to procreate. These newborns simply creeped us out, and quite a few will do the same to you as well. I promise. You can expect to see anything with the surreal nature of a director like David Lynch. But the baby in this feature length film, Eraserhead, is one that will become ingrained in your memory for a long time after seeing it. Henry is left alone to care for his odd looking child. A baby who is swaddled up tightly, features smooth snake like skin, and eyes on the side of its head. Things only get worse when the baby becomes sick, spewing stuff all out of its mouth and growing boils all over its skin. As if the appearance of the head wasn't creepy enough, once the baby's unwrapped, we learn the body was not enclosed in skin, and the Organs just kind of sprawl out in a grotesque scene. Yeah, this is truly a thing of nightmares, and if the visuals were bad enough as it is, the sound effects and endless brooding music only adds to the scene. Messing with animal and human DNA in movies has never been proven to be a good idea, and the film Splice is just further evidence of this. <laughs> when the character Dren is born, we witness a small creature with some bizarre features and noises not too far off from a Jurassic Park raptor. The creature is creepy enough when crawling around, but things get stranger when it wears a dress. Of course, messing around with the DNA and nature has many downfalls, and it's a slow build before Dren turns fully evil. No! Stop! Going through a major withdrawal from a substance like heroin is indescribable for many people, but director Danny Boyle tries to create the best visual possible in train spotting. In the film, Ewan McGregor plays the drug addict Mark Renton, and at one point, his parents force him off of the drugs by locking him up in his childhood bedroom and leaving him alone to go through the withdrawal process there. Once started, Mark sees all types of visions. including a baby crawling on the ceiling. All is well and good until the baby spins his head 180 degrees and gives Renton a death stare. Vision or not, this is something we never, ever want to see in our lives. <laughs> With vampires, werewolves, and massive fight scenes, you would think that animating a small baby would be a piece of cake for the Twilight franchise, but boy did they screw up Edward and Bella's baby girl. The bloody birth was actually one of the more normal parts. It was scenes later on where the baby got real weird. A mix of CG and green screen effects made the baby feel alien-like, and then the tiny baby reaches up and touches Bella's face. Does anyone else have goosebumps and, and, and not the good kind? After four movies of defeating Freddy Krueger and sending him back to the depths of eternal flames, the writers and producers had to get creative for the fifth Nightmare on Elm Street film. Seven, eight, stay up late. So instead of just having Freddy show up again, they decided to make him reborn and show all of us the nightmare rebirth in the process. The practical effects team in Night on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child, went all out to create a baby Freddy that eerily looked similar to the baby Voldemort from the Harry Potter series. We see the creepy baby with the long fingers make its way back to the remains of Freddy from a nightmare on Elm Street 4 before turning into his full form and declaring, It's a boy! And if seeing the creature on screen was bad enough, well, there's an actual action figure release of the Freddy fetus you can own and collect. Just when you thought Sid's babyface mutant toy was going to be the worst of the worst of the Toy Story series, Toy Story 3 outdoes itself with the introduction of Big Baby. Poor baby. We were thrown out together, me and him. The slow walk, the drooping eyelids, the dirt stains, wear and missing accessories. Yeah, we can imagine a whole generation growing up having nightmares of this little guy. 
Big Baby's entry on this list was definitely earned during the playground escape scene. Despite having some cozy options in the Sunnyside daycare butterfly room, the baby doll sits on a swing in the pitch black, presumably all night long. <laughs> In the horror film The Fly, we see what it's like for a human to mix with fly DNA. Hair or something? I don't know. It's, uh, it happens when you get all the weird hair configurations. I don't know. But what happens when the mutated monster decides it wants to expand the family? Be afraid. Be very afraid. Well, we get a nightmare scene unlike anything that we've ever seen before. And for this birthing scene, we witness one of the largest maggots ever. A bloody birth mess that could easily make you gag on your popcorn. Just imagine working in the props department for that film, and you're hired to create an animatronic maggot for this surreal birth scene? The wiggling and attention to detail makes the thing feel all too real, and probably something a mother couldn't even love. <laughs> That's disgusting. The whole evil baby thing is, is like a horror genre in itself, and 1974's It's Alive capitalized on this as much as possible. Thanks to some shady contraceptive drugs, a loving couple's second child is born with fangs and large claws for fingers. When most babies are born, they're shell-shocked and getting used to the outside world. Well, for the little baby in the movie, the first move was adding to its murder count by taking out a doctor and multiple nurses. All of the close-ups of the evil child not only deliver some great scares, but showcase how practical effects can work so well over relying on too much CG. Kill us! Kill us now! The 2004 remake of Dawn of the Dead made some major changes when adapting from the original movie. The zombies run faster, the mall was more modern, and uh, oh yeah, there was a zombie baby birth. <coughs> Luda is about nine months pregnant when a scratch from one of the infected is slowly causing her to turn into a zombie. While being tied down, the baby's born, but there's no happy ending for anyone involved. Luda is killed, two others are killed, and then the zombie baby is left to the mercy of the other survivors. Naturally, a zombie baby running rampant in a shopping mall is not ideal, so we have to see the sad scene of the baby being put to rest with a single gunshot to the skull. Before taking on epic films like Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, Peter Jackson was taking New Zealand by storm with his low-budget horror films. Brain Dead, or known to many as Dead Alive, was one of the bloodiest creations ever, as the film features a deadly zombie-like disease breakout caused by a zoo monkey. <laughs> The dark comedy features a lot of crazy moments, including another zombie baby we just had to add to the list. With facial features enough to have you reconsider having a baby of your own, the brain dead baby goes on a park adventure that turns into pure calamity. The baby is out to attack anyone in its sights, but Lionel must keep the baby under control, even if it means beating the little monster to a bloody pulp in the most hilarious way possible. <laughs> There's nothing like taking the tragedy of a stillborn baby and turning it into a horror film. Well, that's the premise behind the grim and dark grace. In the movie, the baby is supposed to be stillborn, but after spending some time with her mama, she miraculously comes to life. Madeline, you can't will a baby back to life. But all is not normal. Flies constantly hover around the baby like she's rotting from the inside, and her appetite is not breast milk or formula, it's only blood. So yeah, think of Drew Barrymore's Santa Clarita diet, but replace the main character with a baby, and add some more gruesome scenes instead. Growing babies need lots of food. Y yeah, definitely not for the faint of heart. She needs more now. She's teething. While the movie Grace took things completely seriously and down a pretty dark route, the dark comedy Hell Baby went in a completely opposite direction. Hey guys. Shh. 
Despite the comedy undertones in the movie, Hell Baby is still pretty dang creepy with horns and red skin. It's definitely the spawn of the devil and something we would not want to encounter at any point. The movie really nailed it on the head with the best way to make a creepy baby. Just give it a whole mouthful of teeth. Just like in It's Alive, the baby teeth really add the scare factor as these babies should just be born with only gums. This one adds a tail to make things creepier, but in the end, it's burned to death and most of the survivors live happily ever after. What a crazy week. <laughs> oh. I was possessed by the devil. I know, you were know. such so a... Men in Black has a lot of great effects and set pieces. Duration of stay? Lunch. But no matter how much comedy is played into the alien birth scene, the baby itself is something that we would never want to hold in real life. Congratulations, Reg. It's a squid. There's no need to hold any of these alien babies, especially when you have no clue what they're capable of. Kind of. Son of the Mask is one of the most unwarranted sequels of all time, taking the hit Jim Carrey comedy and becoming a shell of what it should have been. In the movie, it's not just the main character donning the mask, but his young son, who is able to perform some pretty spectacular things through the course of the movie. Along with having a war with the dog, the baby can run around, dance, and sing old show tunes. The wacky effects really drive this one home, giving you an uneasy feeling instead of the laughs it's supposed to. After the massive success of the first Paranormal Activity, the sequel kicked things up a notch by putting a baby into the mix. Any parent is used to having monitors in the home, but it's a whole different thing when ghosts and demons are haunting the family as well. <laughs> Besides some cries and strange activity, the best part of Paranormal Activity 2 is how much they keep the baby a true mystery. In the film, one of the characters appears with a bite mark, but we never actually see the baby bite on screen. Keeping the baby's bite marks in the dark helped drive the mystery home further and creates a lot of doubt, intrigue, and questions if this baby is truly possessed. The world of horror is filled with all kinds of iconic masks. There's Jason Voorhees in his hockey mask, Michael Myers in his emotionless white mask, and who can forget Ghostface in his iconic black and white hooded mask design? Well, Happy Death Day is looking to add to the horror legacy with its giant baby mask. Come on, Nick, seriously, Danielle's like freaking out. At first glance, a baby mask should be nothing but a goofy design, but the more you look at it, the creepier it gets. The psychology of horror is often enough to present some grisly ideas, and this one is exactly what happens in the classic film, Rosemary's Baby. You better go down below, miss. When Rosemary finally gets to see her baby for the first time, we don't follow her, only she sees the baby as we see her reaction, and we can only imagine what the son of the devil looks like. The focus on the eyes is enough to send chills down our spine, make us think, and leave us with an uncomfortable feeling when the movie's over. What have you done to it? The Howler horror franchise began as a great werewolf series with some pretty ridiculous effects, but some fun moments all around. Then came the Howling 3 marsupials, and things took a turn towards Crazy Town. <laughs> we saw the birth of some marsupial human hybrid, and the close ups of this little baby are some of the most chilling parts of the movie. The film takes extra steps to provide wolf like whimpers and noises. ensuring it's one baby will never want to cuddle. The creepiest part of all, the mother carries the baby in a pouch. And no, it's not some homemade pouch purchased from Etsy using biodegradable products. It's an actual pouch that grew off of her body. 2018's Halloween was a great return to the horror roots of the original and provided some classic moments between Michael Myers and Laurie. After watching the movie, there was one scene we kept going back to, and it's when Myers slowly saunters through a house and ends up in a nursery. A baby cries in its crib, but Myers chooses to just walk away and expand his attack somewhere else. The thing is, Michael has never shown mercy, or even a conscience. He's a killing machine, pretty much unstoppable, and doesn't let anything get in his way. 
So then why in the world did he decide to walk right by the baby? In this case, we're questioning the baby more than Michael. Does Michael sense some evil intentions in the baby? Could this baby be the next Michael Myers? There are just so many possibilities, and while we're happy Michael didn't add the baby to his kill count, we're still skeptical of what the little infant is up to. Nothing like a movie to convince you that somehow doctors were able to extract the DNA of the devil and then use it to inject mothers and impregnate them. This is exactly the case for the mother of impending twins in the film Blessed. Before the babies are even born, we're treated to some pretty scary shots of the babies moving around the stomach. And once they are born, one of the creepiest shots in the whole movie comes when both twins lay in a crib. <laughs> So yeah, we're not going to visit any birthing centers anytime soon. What baby did you think was the creepiest? Any that we missed? Are creepy babies used too much in movies? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant for more great videos like ones without so many scary infants. Thanks for watching.